Hi, I'm Sam Anon126. I recently came across a video by YouTube user Mr. Repzion responding to a video by the National Organization for Marriage. You can check out the NOM's YouTube channel, where the video can be found, at Nation for Marriage. Both the original video and Mr. Repzion's response should be linked. Of course, Mr. Repzion has already responded to this, but I think I have my own points. Let's begin. Should marriage be limited to one man and one woman? No, but I think we all know what the video's answer will be. Why do governments promote marriage between one man and one woman? They do? Last time I checked, many jurisdictions around the world allow same-sex marriage or civil unions. However, I believe that civil unions should allow all the same rights as marriage when they usually don't. You can check out the Wikipedia page on this, which should be linked. It's not just because two people love each other. No, it's for the perpetuation and stabilization of our society. I think the European countries that allow same-sex marriage are pretty stable. This understanding of marriage is rooted in the biological facts of nature. What facts, exactly? Are they about bearing children? If so, that implies that marriage is only for bearing children. But do we really have any compelling reason to maintain such a narrow definition? Or has the time come for the government to revise and expand our understanding of marriage to include same-sex couples? When it comes to the behavior of its citizens, a government has only three options. It can promote, permit, or prohibit their behavior. For example, the state promotes police work, permits most occupations, but prohibits drug dealing. Why? Because dealing drugs harms society, while police work greatly benefits society. In the same way, our government promotes natural marriage. Natural marriage? I've usually heard traditional marriage for marriage between a man and a woman, even from proponents. Permits most relationships, but prohibits incest and pedophilia. Why? Because incest and pedophilia harm our communities, while natural marriage benefits our communities. True, but I don't see how same-sex marriage would harm communities or diminish these benefits. And here's how. Natural marriage creates children. It's not as if unmarried people don't have children. Plus, same-sex marriage wouldn't do anything to heterosexual married couples who want to have children. It best raises children. The text under the main point reads, Children from natural marriage homes are six times less likely to commit suicide, half as likely to become pregnant out of wedlock, and less likely to drop out of high school. Compared to what? I could imagine these are compared to single-parent homes. Even if they were compared to same-sex parent homes, as I think they're implying, there are no sources cited to back these claims up. It protects women. The text underneath reads, Who often give up or postpone their careers to have children from being abandoned and harmed economically by uncommitted men. Uh, there are married men who don't take care of their children. It civilizes men. The text underneath reads, Married men are more likely to be employed, cause fewer crimes, less likely to be in jail, how often do married men roam the streets in gangs? Does this include men in same-sex marriages? This makes a case for a marriage in general. Again, same-sex marriage wouldn't diminish these benefits. It lowers crime, poverty, and welfare, which in turn reduces government spending and deficits. The text underneath reads, Children from natural marriage homes are seven times less likely to live in poverty, half as likely to commit crime, and are stronger academically and socially. They're also healthier physically and emotionally when they reach adulthood. My points addressing this one are the same as those for the previous. The comparison is not made explicit, and same-sex marriage will not diminish the benefits. In short, natural marriage perpetuates and stabilizes society. In short, any sort of monogamy stabilizes society. Everyone benefits from that, even those who don't get married. Now, let's look at same-sex marriage. I love how marriage is actually in quotation marks. What benefits does it provide? Same-sex marriage offers no benefit for society as a whole. How about the equal right for same-sex couples to raise children? Having more married couples would increase the aforementioned benefits of marriage. In fact, it hurts us. Promoting same-sex marriage changes the very purpose of the civil institution of marriage. Natural marriage centers on bringing up the next generation, on raising children to become good citizens. And same-sex couples can't do that? Same-sex marriage merely validates sex partners. And provides a whole bunch of legal benefits offered to married couples. Concerning the United States federal government, in 1997 report and a 2004 update, the General Accounting Office found over a thousand 
federal statutory provisions classified to the United States Code in which benefits, rights, and privileges are contingent on marital status or in which marital status is a factor. Plus, as I said before, same-sex couples can also raise children. We know, statistically, that natural marriage creates the best possible family for children. Alright, this is an absolute comparison, so I won't ask compared to what. But still, there are no sources cited for this. There aren't even examples of the sort of statistics used in this analysis. If we alter the primary purpose of marriage, the losers will be the children. Sure, but we're not. Same-sex couples can raise children. Is that so hard to understand? Doesn't every child deserve a mom and dad? This is certainly an appealing adage, but I think loving parents, regardless of gender, or even a single parent can make a good family. But what about natural marriages that don't create children? They are the exception, not the rule. The only relationships that do create children are between a man and a woman. Yes, but they're not the only ones who raise them. Wherever same-sex marriage is promoted, schools subject your kids to mandatory homosexual curricula. What homosexual curriculums? This is actually vague enough so that it might even be true or not even objectionable. Clashes pit parents versus gay friendly curriculums. Father faces trial over a school's pro-gay book. Dad arrested after objecting to kindergartners reading material. Are these actually real headlines? If they are, they're certainly not cited. I actually don't think they are, since nobody says pit A versus B, but rather pit A against B, and kindergartners is spelled wrong. Am I the only one who noticed these minor mistakes? These don't do much good for the image of this organization. Your business and your taxes fund homosexual relationships. Government can override your religion, court rules. Business not allowed to reflect faith of their owners. Christian photographers sued for refusing to take pictures of gay wedding. Again, there are no citations for these headlines. While I'll agree the first one is bad, I don't think the second one is too far off from what the government should do. There's a little something called the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, and this is still an ongoing issue. Your freedom of speech is gag. Sports anchor fired for tweeting his support for true marriage. Consultant fired for writing book opposing same-sex marriage. I think the paper that would publish the first headline is a bit biased if it uses the term true marriage. That makes the authenticity of the headline even more questionable. I'm not going to ask to what sort of consultant is the second headline referring. Besides, both of these concern actions by private individuals, not by governments. There are issues like the amount of protection that the employee should receive in the name of free speech. But again, these headlines are not cited, so I can't investigate further. And your religious freedom is overruled. Student expelled. Disagreed with same-sex marriage. Catholic charities to stop adoption service over same-sex marriage law. The first one needs more investigation. But something like the second one comes up every time a law is passed that affects religious institutions. Some people just don't understand that rights are not unlimited. The exercise of these rights is limited by the rights of others. The government has no compelling interest in legally promoting same-sex marriage. None. Other than everything I've said so far. But we have every reason to continue to promote natural marriage. Sure, and governments will continue to promote it alongside same-sex marriage. But what about equality? The law already treats everyone equally. Every citizen can marry someone of the opposite sex. But is it fair to promote natural marriage but not promote same-sex marriage? Yes, the law treats all people the same, but it doesn't treat all behaviours the same. Same-sex marriage and natural marriage are different behaviours with different outcomes, so the law rightfully treats them differently. Isn't this discrimination against homosexuals? No. This discriminates against behaviors, not people. For example, are you being discriminated against when the government promotes police work, but you never become a police officer? No, not at all. We all benefit when police work is encouraged. I can understand the argument on discrimination, but it relies on the claim that same-sex marriage harms society. Of course, this video makes a case for that claim, but I've already called it into question, to say the least. 
In the same way, people who don't marry someone of the opposite sex are not discriminated against when our government promotes natural marriage. In fact, we all benefit when natural marriage is encouraged. But what about tolerance? Yes, same-sex marriage advocates need to be more tolerant. Obama's EEOC nominee. Society should not tolerate private beliefs that adversely affect homosexuals. This headline stands out since it's so blatantly taken out of context. Okay, for those who don't know, the EEOC is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, and that goes back to the 14th Amendment rights I mentioned earlier. This is the critical piece of information that clues you in to what's going on. Indeed, the government should not tolerate such private beliefs if they go into the hiring process. That's the sort of thing the EEOC is supposed to prevent. Homosexual relationships are already tolerated in the US. They can already commit themselves to each other until death do them part, without government endorsement. Yeah, and heterosexual couples can also commit themselves without getting married. But as I said before, marriage offers many legal benefits for couples that committed relationships without legal endorsement do not. But only the union of one man and one woman should be promoted, because it alone is the foundation of a civilized society. You can't be serious. That's not bigotry. That's biology. Even though most of this video actually concerns sociology. I can learn more on the website, but not so much about the sources of information for this video. I would have excused the NOM for not including them in the video if they were on its website, but they weren't, at least from what I could find. I'm Samain on 126. Thanks for watching. I'll keep an eye on that National Organization for Marriage.